Those boos were for President Biden at yesterday's congressional baseball game. Lawyer, uh, lawmakers took time off from playing politics to play ball, and the Republicans won for the first time in over five years. Maybe it's a sign of things to come. But the victory for the GOP probably wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for this timely hit by Florida's Greg Stubbe. Democrats were trying to get caught up. Wow, this is a long Greg ball. Stubbe with the Greg first Stubbe. pitch and the first swing. It's going to be a home run. Stubbe out of the ballpark into the left field bleachers. <laughs> Stubbe with the very first offering from Pete Aguilar swings and sends it to left field and out. <laughs> Just incredible. And it cleared the fence into the second row. Well, joining us now is that congressman himself, Greg Stubbe. Sir, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> well, congrats on the win and the very impressive home run. Uh, you know, I was talking with my co-host Steve Cortez last night, and we said this couldn't have been your first rodeo. It looks like you may have had a, a history with baseball. Yeah, I played in high school and, and just didn't want to play in college when I first graduated and had a few scholarships to play in other places, but then, of course, missed it and uh, enjoying the opportunity that we get as members of Congress to play at the, uh, the Nats MLB Stadium once a year. So tell us about the experience last night. Well, I, I, what was great was everybody in the entire stadium, and they sold 26,000 tickets, and the, the entire bottom bowl was pretty packed full of fans. Uh, everybody was focused on the president, and Biden had moved from the, the Democratic side to the Republican side, and everybody was watching him. Even my conversation with the umpire, I'm like, do you want me to go ahead and hit? Because if I, if I foul it, I'm going to hit the president. It's going to be your fault. And he said, oh, no, go ahead. The pitcher was like, go ahead. So nobody was watching the field, and then I completely took all the attention off of Biden and brought it back to the field as it should be. And uh, I thought that was very telling because then the entire Republican dugout emptied to greet me at the plate and Biden was left sitting there by himself in the dugout. <laughs> that I think is that fantastic. Was well, that, that, that made my night. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And, you know, we played that sound of Biden uh, being booed at the game earlier. But really, you know, it seems like the administration is treating running the country a lot like the game, like a game. We have this pathetic image of Biden receiving the COVID booster shot in the soundstage with this fake White House backdrop. And listen to the White House press secretary describe the spending bill negotiations as if she's a Hollywood producer. Well... This is why we all came to Washington. Uh, it's like an episode of a TV show. Uh, where we, I, I'm not in a position to put lick on a crystal ball here. Which TV show? Yeah. Maybe the West Wing? If something good happens, maybe Veep if not. Congressman, it feels more like a horror movie or a nightmare. I mean, do they, do they really think this is a game? Yeah, absolutely. This has been a game for them. They've It's only taken them nine months to completely uproot and destroy our country. Look what's happening at the southern border. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people every month coming in record after record. Look at the economy. Look at all of the indicators of the health of our company. Look at what happened in Afghanistan. It's an, an atrocity what has happened in our country. And we're only like nine months in to Biden's four-year presidency. So I'm praying hard and working hard to make sure the Republicans take the House back in the fall. They can't even get their own liberal, progressive, crazy spending bill across the finish line. We, they, we passed a CR today, which means the budget's going to be funded. We're sitting here now at the Capitol. We were just told votes are going to probably go and maybe happen at 10 o'clock, but they don't even know what votes. They're trying to get the votes for the infrastructure package. They don't know if they have enough votes for that because the progressives are fighting with the moderates in their own party. So they can't even agree in their own party as to how much money they're going to spend. We're at $5.5 trillion that they want to spend after we have spent $11 trillion in the last 18 months. We only take in $3.5 trillion a year. I don't know about you, but I couldn't run my finances that way. I don't think that anybody could run their business that way, but that's how they're running the country, and it's a disgrace. Yeah, and, and they're certainly not fooling the American people, regardless of, of how the media wants to portray this administration. Uh, the newest Rasmussen survey has 54% of the country disapproving of Biden's job right now. Well, what's crazy is who are the 42% that approve? I mean, I, I mean, you <laughs> have crisis point. after crisis after crisis, some of which I just got into, a lot of which you, we've just scratched the surface on. And who's that 42% that actually approve of the job that this president's doing, destroying our nation um, from one aspect of our country to the other? Uh, I think we all stand as Americans for the America First agenda. We need to bring the America First agenda back to this country, back to this White House, and back to this Congress. 
Well, Congressman Greg Stubbe, hey, congrats again on that a magnificent hey. home run. I don't think a Democrat could accomplish that. So thanks again for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you.